Hey everybody, welcome to the Unturned 3.0 update. I'm going to be giving you guys a tutorial on how to use the editor. So you can access it by going to the rightmost tab called Workshop. Click on the Editor sub-tab beneath that. And then it will show all the maps available. So right now it should just be dev test for you if you haven't made any yet. I have some other maps I made just called test and test one. So basically to add a new map, you're going to go over to the left side and name the map. So we'll call this tutorial. And you can change the dimensions as well. Although 512 by 512 is a pretty general size. So we're going to use that. So then you can click on the add button. It will add to the right side. You can click on your map that you want to use. We're going to use tutorial. And then click on edit. And that will load up the map for us, and you can see it's nice and blank, so you can get your creative juices flowing and uh, give some life to this square, um, flat box thing. So, we have four tabs at the top, starting with terrain. We're going to move from left to right, so the terrain tab has four sub-tabs, starting with heights. So basically, you can alter the landscape as much as you want, and you'll see you can edit the size of the brush, so we'll make it fairly big. And we're going to want to raise the land because pretty much anything above this little blue layer here will show. Right now we have no textures on it, so it'll probably just come up black. Yeah, so a little ugly right now, but we just want to get it above that blue area for the most part so we can see what we're doing. And it happens, it always changes the brush to smooth, so to make sure it's just always on raise, that's when the arrow is pointed upwards. And we're just going to raise that up. It's hard to tell how high it is, but you can always add a material whenever you want. So... If you want to get more towards the edges, you may have to decrease your brush size, so it allows you to get in more towards the edges. So we'll just raise that up. Okay, you have the um, lower button, which does the opposite, smooth, which smooths things out, and flatten, which will basically flatten it to like the bottom floor of the map. So now we want to make this not black anymore, so you can click on the materials tab, and... That will give you a list of materials on the right side. It's a scroll bar, so you can just scroll down, look through them all. We're going to use grass, so find grass, click on the grass button, and once again, you can edit the size in the bottom left corner. So we want to make this fairly big. And you'll see one of the boxes here is called generated. You want to make sure that's unclicked because that means you can paint it yourself, and we want to paint it ourselves, so we don't want it to be generated. So then we can just paint that on. Paint that on nicely. I'm going to put sand around the sides, I think. Let's see. So we'll paint the center grassy, and then if we scroll down, there should be a sand. Yeah, there's the sand. Um, I have to decrease my brush size. And I should be able to just paint everything else now with sand. And you'll notice right now, it looks a little bit choppy when the two textures meet. But I'll show you how that is fixed in a moment. Just don't want to... I want to get rid of all the black for you guys. And then I might alter the landscape a little bit. Oh, mess it up a little bit. Uh, let's decrease the brush size. Ooh, a little small. So basically, as I was saying, when it meets, it's a little bit ugly. <laughs> so... In the bottom right, you'll see a button called Bake Materials, and you're going to be using this a lot. So when you click Bake Materials, it... Oh, uh, what did I do? <laughs> I'm stupid. I press, so you have to make sure generated's off because then it deletes it. So I don't want to have to paint that all again. I'm just, I'll just take a quick little... Quick little square. <laughs> yeah, this island is just looking so beautiful already. Okay. And that, folks, is why you keep your generated on, or generated off. Okay, so let's try that again. Bake materials, and you'll see it just it makes a better transition when you go from grass to sand. And I know our map is a little shitty looking right now, so let's, um, let's add a little bit more grass. I don't want to spend too much time doing this, but you can just get a feel for the painter. If you want to add gravel, dirt, you can do all that as well. And then bake materials again. And there you have it, but it's looking a little plain, right? So we want to add some grass, trees, stuff like that. So you'll see the tab next to materials is called details. So this might be a little bit confusing for all of you, but you can get the hang of it pretty quickly. So if you go back to your materials tab, you'll see grass has a bunch of these options. Grassy 1, grassy 2, 
flowery, stuff like that, and rocky. So you have those four. So we're going to say that's grassy. And then when you go over to details, you'll see for flowers, it will only enable on things that are grassy 1 and grassy 2. So if we go to materials, you'll see we have grassy 1 enabled, and we'll enable grassy 2 also. So um, we'll add some overgrowth to that. So we want stuff to grow. Go to details, and you'll see you have grass 1 and grass 2 enabled. So we can just increase the density of flowers, increase the chance of flowers, press big details, and hopefully that didn't work. <laughs> Hold on. Grassy 1, Grassy 2. So, let's see, why didn't that work? Oh, there we go. So that just put flowers, basically everything on the grass. But let's say we want to add grass to the grass. Do that, that would make sense. So we're just going to increase the density. We have Grass 1 and Grass 2 checked off because it goes with the Grassy 1 and Grassy 2 checked off on the Materials tab. And we should be able to add grass to it now. Bake details. And now you'll see we have some grass. I'm going to increase the density of that because we want a bunch of it. And actually, if you go over to Materials, we can make it even more by increasing the overgrowth. Increasing the chance. Uh, bake materials. And bake it again. And now we have a lot more grass and a ton of flowers. But... Our sand is looking a little bit amateurish, so if that's a word. So let's say we want to add some, maybe some rocks to the sand. So if you go over to the materials tab again, we need to find where our sand was. It's down here. And sand has rocky on it. I'm going to say flowery. It doesn't really matter. These are, as long as it goes together. So we have that as flowery. So that means if we go to details and we scroll down to rocks or pebbles, we don't need grass 1 and grass 2 because that's not enabled, but we do need flower enabled because we said it was flowery. You know, it sounds like stupid, but <laughs> flower, it has to go together. And then we'll make both of those, pebbles 0 and pebbles 1, have flower enabled. Increase the density and chance of both. And also, I forgot one thing, materials we need to make sure that's over growth and chance high. And now that we have everything on, the density on, we should be able to just bake it. And that should give us some rocks that are only on the grass. And let's say you want to just have the rocks on, I mean, if you want to have the rocks on the grass too, not just the sand. I messed up what I was saying there. Just enable grass 1, grass 2 for each of them. Bake details. And that will put rocks and everything. But that looks bad, so we're just going to disable that. And yeah, that's pretty much all that. You can do that with all the materials. Let's say we want to add some wheat. I'll just go into further detail here so you guys got a further understanding. Uh, we want to add a farm. I think it looks pretty much the same as sand, but let's say our farm's going to be in this corner over here. So we'll just paint it out. Oh, it's a little bit darker than the sand. And uh, bake materials. Oh, I didn't. Make sure your generator is, generator is unchecked. And there we go. There's our little farm. So our farm is going to be... We already did flowery, and that gives rocks. So let's make it... Let's say the farm is rocky. And we'll go over to details. Uh, actually, let's make the overgrowth high and the chance high. Go over to details. And we need wheat to enable on rock. Not on grass. And the fact that we just disabled grass, that should get rid of the grass and the flowers on it. We'll just enable rock. Um, increase the density, increase the chance, don't forget that. And bake details. And now we have some wheat that is only on the sand. We have the rocks where, they, where they're supposed to be, etc. And let's say we want to add rocks to this farm, which is bad because if a tractor runs over rocks, it will kill you. Um, we can enable pebbles. We can enable the rock icon for pebbles, and that will add rock just to that, which looks awful, so let's get rid of that. <laughs> oh. And that's really all there is to it. It's really just a series of um, baking and testing out stuff, what you want to see. And uh, that's it for the materials and details. And now we definitely need some trees. So the last sub-tab is called Resources. It basically works the same way, so... Um, 
uh, we want the trees to go in the grass. So tree one and tree two basically means that they'll be enabled in the grass. So we need a high density or mid density and chance for both of them and bake resources. And we have a nice forest area and they didn't spawn on the farm because we don't want trees on our farm. But we're gonna build some rows next. So I don't want there to be too many trees in our way. So I'm just gonna decrease the density and chance. Okay, bake resources. That should give us a few less trees so we can build our roads. Okay, so. We covered everything in the terrain tab, and now we're going to move on to the environment tab. So we have lighting. This is pretty cool here. Everything uses like an RGB scale, and you can edit it for yourself. You can change the time in the bottom left so you can see what time you're dealing with. So we're going to work with midday. So if we edit the sky at midday, it's looking a little bit white. So if we increase the blue here, we can probably get a better blue field. Decrease the red and the green. Um... Yeah, that looks a little bit better. A little bit more blue. I'll take it. And you can pretty much edit anything you want here. The sky, dawn, midday, midnight, ambient dawn, all that stuff. Fog, fog color. And if you scroll all the way to the bottom, you can change the the intensity of a lot of stuff. So the, um, uh, the amount of clouds at midday, let's say, you can decrease. So there's less clouds. Or you can add more clouds, increase the density. And that's what all that does. Pretty self-explanatory. Now on to the roads. This is a little bit harder. Um, the roads are a bit glitchy when you make turns. So if you're using the highway, we'll start out with the highway. Let's say we want a highway that just goes right across the center of our map. You want to move from that beach to that beach. So you can just click once. I'll place an icon down. And the next time you click over here, hopefully that doesn't go through my trees, it should make a line from one point to the other. And you can click on Bake Roads, and we basically made a road that went into the ground. So you can just edit that by going back to our Terrain Height Editor, lowering it a little bit, so that way our road shows up. There we go. Looks a little bit better. And you can edit that as you please, raise, lower it, whatever floats your boat. Now the thing is with the roads is that their turns don't always work that well. <laughs> so if you're using a highway, I recommend... I'll show you an example in a second. So we were in environment, roads. So if you have a highway, and let's say we made a highway around our farm because we just have such a cool farm. When you make sharp turns, it tends to do this. <laughs> so um, don't make sharp turns. You can either do like a wide... Oh, got to delete that. Um, you can either make like a wide angle turn. Well, I guess we'll do it in this corner. Kind of like a circle, circular stuff. Oop, I always do that. And bake it, and you'll see we don't really have that problem anymore. But if you want to do a tight turn, you can literally just do two separate roads. So like here to here, bake the road. Um, and then here, oop, got to delete that. Here to here, and then bake that road. You'll see they're kind of connect. You can level it up a little bit better, line it up better. And that's how you do that. And you have a bunch of different roads. You can do just a regular road, a trail, um, a white line, single dotted yellow line, stuff like that. But it's all pretty much the same in how it works. So you can just... Oop, I always... So basically to deselect, you kind of just have to click once and then you can delete it when it attaches to something. And to delete a road, you just click on it and that will place the tab, then press delete. And you'll see once you bake roads again, we just deleted that whole road. Okay, and ignore the bird in the background, just pretend it's part of the game. And that's a trail, just kind of stuff like that. So we have like a semi road, this one's awful, so I'm going to delete that out. So as I was saying to delete, just uh, click on the point you want, press the delete key on your keyboard. Just do that for all the keys. There might be a faster way, but that's what, I, what, what I've been doing. And bake roads. So we're missing a lot of roads, but we'll just keep that for now, it's good enough for us. So, what do we need next? Navigation and nose doesn't really work right now, so we're just going to ignore those. Um, I'm going to save the spawns tab for last, because that's not really... You kind of have to add your objects first. So we'll go to the objects tab. You have small, medium, and large objects. So we'll start with large, because we're going big. And let's say we want a fire, fire station, maybe? 
mm, diner. I'll do a fire station. So when you click on fire station, it'll tell you your selection at the top, and you can just put your mouse somewhere on your where you want to put it, and then press E on your keyboard because we want a fire station at our farm, which makes perfect sense. So um, there you go. Let me add some gravel underneath that, so that way we don't want grass in our fire station. So terrain materials. Where where'd that gravel go? Make our brush really small, and just kind of outline that. That way we won't have, we shouldn't have all that grass growing in there. Okay, hopefully that worked. Oh, I always do that. Okay, details, N. Oh, let's see. We probably have gravel enabled for something. Gotta bake that up. Why, why did I put? <laughs> I think my gravel had some wheat characteristics on it, but yeah, we'll just see if we can fix that. So we gotta get rid of the wheat that's inside this fire station. Um, why don't we just say that our gravel has nothing, which we did. Oh, th that was dirt. Shit, my bad. Okay, paint some gravel, bake materials. Okay, it should be it should work this time. So we'll press break, bake details, and there we go. No more hay in our fire station. So let's say we're over at the objects tab, and uh, we added our fire station. We're gonna add other stuff to doing the same thing, and we want to add some spawns to that. So we have players and item spawns. Right now, animals and vehicles are not in it, but I assume. They'll be similar to players and items. So we'll add our player first. That's pretty simple. Just click on player, uh, put it wherever you want. We'll put it right next. We'll spawn them right next to our fire station, and uh, just press add, and that's it. And now we can go to items, and let's say we want to spawn some stuff in our fire station. So we need to make a table on the right. So let's say this is going to be fire station spawns. Or just we'll call it fire station. We'll add it, and we want to click on it. So our selection is now fire station, and we're gonna want to add tiers. So the basic thing, the basic tiers to add is common and rare. So we can set the settings for each. So under common, we're gonna want to spawn things using the ID. So I think there's like 17 items in the editor right now, and I think each each number, um, a cool like is according to a different object so if we say ID 1 and press add that will spawn shades and there's a hundred percent chance we want to do maybe a ninety percent chance of a fifteen percent chance of rare eighty four percent chance of common it adds it to a hundred percent but there's like a rounding issue so don't worry about that and um, so now if you click on common it will spawn shades or has a chance of spawning shades we can press uh, let's see what 8 is ID of 8 add Shades and vehicle grip. And under rare, you'll see those are gone now, so we can add a new IDs for rare. So let's say a gun and ammo. I think a gun is 4 or something like that, I believe. 4 is AR32, and I think 5 is the ammo for it. So now we have a 15% chance of spawning this AR32 and its iron sights, and an 84% chance of spawning these shades and grips. Now, we didn't actually place any items yet, so now we can just place them throughout the fire station. Put them over here, add a few in the corners, and you can just set all your spawn points. Okay, so we set our spawn points, and um, that's really it. You can change the color scheme if you want, where it says RGB, so that way you can kind of color code it for yourself. Uh, let's just say we'll make them pink or something like that. So all our fire station spawns are pink. And that's really all there is to it. I think we went over everything. If you guys have any questions, just let me know. I know that was kind of all over the place, but hopefully that gives you a better idea of how do you have how to use the editor. And um, that's all. Thanks for watching this video. If you want to support it, feel free to gently press that like button and subscribe. And as always, have a fantastic day.